Hi, uh, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, I'm stuck here in Springbok. I'm not sure whose dog this is. Um, I'm here at an awesome campsite. Oh, well, the luxury chalet is actually called Lufland. Um, today is Monday. Last Tuesday we had trouble. And so, yeah, this crisis is still ongoing. Um, and who knows when it's going to end. Um, I foresee myself only being able to go back home on Friday. So yeah, lots of drama in this story. Um, grab a coffee. Um, I'm on the whiskey stage already. Um, yeah, and to, to make the drama worse, my wife's daughter had an accident over the weekend in Johannesburg. So we had to get her back to the airport. Um, she's in ICU on, on a ventilator. So yeah, this is the story is about how um, modifications can can change your life or make your life very very difficult, um, specifically bad modifications because the bad modification, that's where your weakest link is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go inside, so let's continue the story there. Um, yeah, as I said, grab that coffee. Welcome to the Bushkuru family. As we travel Africa, creating and sharing our unforgettable overlanding stories. We are experts in comfort overlanding and vehicle customization. We invite you to join us on our journey or on one of our micro-adventures as we help you to create and share your own memorable stories, creating inspiration and unlocking hidden mystical places to a wider audience. For more Miles of Smiles, please support us on Patreon so we can continue sharing our adventures with you. Oh, welcome to the warm inside of this lovely leafland cottages um, it's really been an oasis for us in this wet weather that we've experienced here in the in springbok or in the Ruchtersveld area it's been at seven degrees outside at the moment so it's extremely cold um, yeah coming back to 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 the drama um, and modifications i try to to do non-engineering type modifications um, and conversions on the vehicle. So I, I try to stay away from, for instance, the 95mm um, rear um, width correction um, because of the difference in the, in the axle um, on the 70 series. So I, I didn't want to, to mess with that. Um, I think the engineering that Toyota does on the Land Cruisers are, it's been tried and tested, so I don't want to mess with that. There was one thing that I needed to do on the double cab um, to allow me to put the weight in the center. Um, and if you look at my video um, on, on, on the bolt, which, which I'll put in the descriptions below, um, you would see um, how good the handling basically has improved with, with putting all the weight in the center of the bolt. Um, so I had to do it at uh, sort of a, a, a chassis extension. Um, you get different lengths. Um, there's the standard 300, 350, and 600 um, length corrections that you can do. Um, and I went for the 350, um, but I didn't know or didn't really um, investigate. Well, there's not a lot of videos um, online on exactly what the, the negative aspects of that could be. So maybe this video could also be something to, for you to, to consider when you, you look at doing an a, a extension. From the start of the, um, of the bolt, the vehicle had a, a, a funny shudder when I reversed um, and there was a clicking sound coming from the, from the bottom. I thought it was brakes and then we thought it was the lockers and, and stuff like that. Um, all that was test, tested, new brakes put on before I came, vehicle service, and they, they looked at the bearings and everything was hunky-dory. Um, so I thought everything was fine. So we went up and the vehicle handled beautifully um, on the whole eco route, specifically that there's an 80 kilometer section that's quite airy um, in terms of, of it's not just corrugation, it's just pure rocky. It's like single track on a mountain bike, but very hairy single track. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't really uh, uh, a, a farm road or anything. It was just this rocky patch that you have to go. And even that, that handled beautifully. With the trailer, I didn't even know that I had the trailer on. Um, 
But coming back, a couple of weeks back, I took the trailer for its stand set up, and when I reversed, I heard a hell of a, and I, I felt a, like I hit something, and you can feel it on the car. I jumped out, I thought I'd reversed into something, and there was nothing. I mean, they didn't, I looked under the vehicle, I didn't go over anything. Um, so I think damage was done at that point already. Um, fast forward, we go up, um, and on the video you will see we went up this, this rocky section, um, and suddenly I just lost traction, um, and I thought it was the vehicle, it's, well, I thought it was just the, the, the trail. But at that traction loss, just before that, we had a hell of a, a, a noise from under the vehicle, like, I'm not sure what it was. Um, we didn't hit a rock because my clearance was high, there wasn't any rocks below. Um, we didn't realize that we actually, it was at that point that the, um, um, that, that the, what do you call it, the um, prop shaft broke. Um, so we lost all 4x4 um, and we couldn't go any higher. Um, so there was no rear, the rear wheels had no traction. Um, the front wheels were lifting slightly because of, of, at that point, there wasn't a lot of traction on the front wheels because of the weight of the trailer and all the weight on the, on the cruiser being at the back. Yeah, and we got stuck there and in that, I immediately shouted to my wife, jump out, because I lost complete control of the vehicle. It just started sliding her mind of its own. So I was afraid that we might maybe turn over or something like that, because there was a cliff section. You, would, you wouldn't actually see it on the video. Normally, you don't see the real, the real terrain on the video. It doesn't even look that steep as it was. So, um, completely lost control, she went down, um, my brother-in-law came up and we, we tried to see um, what we can do to, to, to correct the trailer so it's straight and at least, at least we can go backwards. Um, it wasn't possible and we couldn't even unhook the cruiser from the trailer. Um, after an hour's struggle, we, we sort of just, a couple of us hang on the back um, and then we were able to lift the trailer from the hook, from the ball. And then we just reversed the cruiser down and the trailer stood at this precarious position um, at, at, that we couldn't correct. I mean, we even tried to winch, we tried a couple of things. Um, the rocks actually broke um, on, on which, because the, the, the rocks aren't that, that strong that um, or dense in that area, so so they it was quite brittle. Um, yeah, and so we were stuck. It was Tuesday evening, and we just decided to go. Let's camp there. It was lovely. We actually all slept outside because the tents were obviously on the trailer, and so they um, they didn't have tents to sleep in. So we all slept outside. I brought the mattress down from from the rooftop tent, and it was. It was a lovely family bonding, um, and it was, yeah, we enjoyed it. It was lovely weather. I mean, it wasn't cold. Um, we actually, it was quite hot, and um, there was no wind. Um, so yeah, we enjoyed sleeping outside, all of us, looking at the stars. Um, but every time that you look up to the trailer, you realize there's a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, but also, um, I've, I've, I, I skipped a part. As we, um, my wife and sister tried to go and look for help, so they took the, the only vehicle, we had, other vehicle we had was the uh, Mercedes, what's it, X-Class, um, which we didn't want to, to use on the trailer because we were afraid that something might happen to the vehicle also, and then our only other form of, of escape was sort of gone. Um, I mean, in the two to three days that we spent in that, valley at the end of the day, we didn't see one, any other person, any other vehicle, nothing passed us. So it was really remote. Uh, we, um, um, and so yeah, my wife and sister tried to go, ugh, yeah, they tried to go and look for help and they stayed away longer than we expected. So we thought they got lost. They were also low on diesel. We were on our way to Steinkoff to fill up their diesel um, in any case. So we had our mileage planned. And yeah, they stayed away for a long time. My brother-in-law and I jumped in my 
in, in, in the 4x4 in the cruiser and we went to look for them and then suddenly we heard this clanking sound at the bottom and then I looked under and I realized the prop shaft was completely off and it was sort of spinning um, it's like, <laughs> like a limp yeah I, I said um, he, the, the buffalo was, was wounded and it, it sort of was a uh, limp dick in the sand because that's how it looked with this big um, prop shaft just hanging in the sand there. So we tied that with um, straps to the bottom of the car and we went back to, our, to where the whole drama started. So at least that my two um, nephews, they were on their own there. So, so to get the base that were all there, um, all the food, everything was in the Bush Guru Cruiser. So yeah, luckily my wife and sister also made it back. Lights flashing for diesel. I had extra diesel, luckily. Um, so we left it for the next morning. The next morning, they went to Springbok to try and get um, somebody to come and assist us. Firstly, to get the prop shaft loose because we couldn't get that loose with the tools that we had. We had all the right sizes of sockets and everything, but we just didn't have that torque that we needed to get those bolts loose um, so that we can at least drive with the, 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 the Bush Guru Cruiser. And then um, also to help some, get someone to help us with the, getting the trailer down from halfway up the mountain, or the hill or whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, so they only came back at about three o'clock, shame. And the only people they could get was um, a company called Eight Cake uh, Towing Services in Springbok. Eight Cake, um, yeah, that really <laughs> was flipping expensive, but yeah, they, they, they were able to assist us, but that's what, what else can you do? Um, so they got the, the prop shaft loose, and then with, I think it was um, intervention from above, they, 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 it looks easy, but they, they struggled really to get that, um, the ball right underneath the, um, the tow bar because we, you really had to get it right there. You couldn't move that trailer at all. And we, um, yeah, we got that. And the moment that they had it worked, um, they just also lost all control over their vehicle. But for some reason, it, as I said, it was divine intervention. The trailer just fell correctly on the, on the spur and we were able to, to tow it down. Um, and we said, okay, they can leave. We, we will try and find our way slowly back to Springbok. Um, and because it was late, uh, we didn't want to, to get to Springbok um, at late at night. So we decided to stay in the canyon. We found a beautiful spot again. Um, but immediately I realized, I mean, the only, the only, vehicle, uh, the only wheels that were still working was the, the, four, uh, the front wheel drive. Um, so there was no 4x4. We actually went slightly off, off track to, to park the trailer and we got stuck again. Um, oh yes, and we also, one of the tires was slashed um, on the mountain as we tried to, to, to recover the vehicle still with the Bush Guru. So we had to re replace tires. So I used my Max tracks, I used my winch, I used um, high lift jack. I used all my recovery gear um, except straps, um, tow towing straps, just in that one afternoon, which was quite, quite funny. Um, so we had a lovely evening outside, but I think we saw some indication of leopard again and very remote, beautiful spot. Um, beautiful vultures and stuff that we, ach, not vultures, um, eagles that we saw. Um, yeah, again, a majestic place, the the Namakwa um, Echo Trail. Next day, Thursday, we found our way back to Springbok. It was raining cats and dogs suddenly. I mean, it went from very hot to very cold within 12 hours. Um, we arrived here at Liefland um, and uh, we found a place to stay for the whole family and we went to Toyota in town. Toyota said, well, they couldn't, it, it's a custom, it's a custom make, but they, they assisted us with the trailer to let the trailer stand there. And we, we got hold of the guys that did the original cab extension. Um, of course, I wasn't very pleased. Um, but the problem was, now it's a custom thing. We had to get the part back 
to Cape Town so that they can work on it. Um, so we send it through Thursday afternoon, hoping it was overnight. Um, so today is Monday, um, and it only arrived in Cape Town this morning. Um, so now it's an issue of getting the right um, links um, to them. They don't have, for some reason, I'm not sure, they, they built it, but they don't have any engineering plans of it. So now they actually need the vehicle again. So now after spending the whole morning at Toyota and to and fro on the telephone, it seems I have to drive at 60 kilometers an hour on the front wheels down to Cape Town tomorrow morning, deliver the vehicle to Cab and Chessie so that they can do the measurements. I have to bring my wife's FJ up, come and get the trailer because I can't tow the trailer also. Um, so yeah, that's where we are at this stage. Um, and as I said, over the weekend, Saturday morning, we were down in Honor Club Bay because my mother was coming up with her little Mazda 2 Series <laughs> to, to Honor Club Bay, and the whole family would meet there. So we, we actually drove at 60 kilometers an hour, the 180 kilometers there took us over three hours. Um, and then Saturday morning, we heard my wife's daughter, my stepdaughter, had an accident. So. Sure, I had to take that Mazda 2 Series, drive down to Cape Town, get my wife to the airport. She can fly up to Johannesburg to, to be with her daughter, who was in ICU at this stage still. Um, and then that next morning, 3 o'clock, I drove back to Honokla Bay, um, but not knowing that, yeah, I mean, I needed... Um, but the trailer was with, with Toyota, so we could have had the trailer towed down, but we couldn't get access to the tra access to the trailer. Um, but we also hoped that that we could actually get the part here and not have this driving down two or three times. So yeah, that's where we are. Um, as they say, modifications. That's your um, your weakest link um, in any four by four, and I think I found mine. Now, um, hopefully, we can use uh, could use this lesson with the guys that built the uh, that modified the, the the prop shaft, so that they can make a stronger product, so I can feel more secure um, and have confidence again. Because at the moment, I don't have confidence in that part at all. So, only time will tell if they can do it better this time. Um, but yeah. It's, it's make, it made me think a lot about um, modifications. So I'm going to do another video on, on, on basically uh, in with, with the bolt and what I would have done otherwise. Um, yeah, this is definitely going to be in there. Um, not as long, but yeah. Um, thank you for, for watching and um, I'll keep you updated on the Instagram channel <laughs> um, if we made it trailer everything back to Cape Town. I, I guess this whole operation would end on Thursday this week when I'll be able to get the, have the trailer also down in Cape Town. So yeah, thanks and yeah, good luck with, with your 4x4 and hopefully it's um, not as dramatic as this one. But yeah, it was still an awesome trip and I can't wait to do it again. Thanks.